What's up YouTube? In this video, I want to show you how I turned my boring old Ender Tree 3D printer from this to this. So this is just barn on this channel we do just about anything you can do yourself. Um, I just want to first apologize for not making a video in a while. I've been really really busy with work so YouTube normally gets pushed on the back burner and I'm really sorry but you know I gotta get paid to make more videos um, because I don't get money from like YouTube and stuff yet. So if you want to see more videos please make, make sure and subscribe and like and comment. I really need this. So, I just want to introduce you guys to my 3D printer. So this is my Creality and the Tree 3D printer. I got this for a steal of a deal. Basically cost price or warehouse price. It's a really really nice starting printer. Basically someone actually bought this, brought it down to Trinidad Tobago. By the way, Trinidad Tobago has really really expensive duties and customs. So shipping anything in my country is always a headache. So please sponsor my videos. So someone bought this, they bought it with ABS. Which is a very difficult printing material to print with and they basically you know hit their head a lot of times with it and they got frustrated um so now i have a 3d printer finally i know that you guys might be saying you know it's about time so i'll be doing some really cool projects with 3d printers coming up i want to do this i want to incorporate some stuff there with my drones i got some tpu filament also so hopefully i might be able to do some fun stuff for there once i get the time and yeah so um the reason why he had a lot of trouble with printing ABS is because ABS is a very difficult material to print with. It's the same material as that is used in Lego bricks. So it's strong but it's it's very particular and one of the things ABS needs to have good print quality is an enclosure. Um, ABS can be very susceptible to like changes in, in environmental temperature. So by a simple door opening or you walking past a 3D printer can cause a light breeze. That will basically cause the temperature around the material to, to change causing some layers to shrink and basically detach it can cause um the print to unstick from the bed and it can cause warping now this 3d printer this ender tree can print abs and it can print it pretty well because i have gotten some really nice prints of recent mainly upgrades around the 3d printer but i mean just to make it a lot better i needed an enclosure what i was doing before is i'll put it i used to put this in a corner of my house and then use some pieces of wood to like kind of block it away so that you know a breeze or AC unit doesn't affect the print quality. With the enclosure, what's gonna happen is that the temperature inside the area is gonna be kind of be more well maintained from the bed going up, which will give us a significantly better print. Now, for this 3D printing enclosure, I originally wanted to use full plexiglass, but due to COVID-19, the price of plexi has skyrocketed in my country. Um, my next option which is I wanted to use a network cabinet but I was gonna cost about 200 US also um, Creality does sell uh, enclosure for their 3d printers it costs about 80 to 90 US then I have to add the cost of shipping and all these things so I decided that's not really good and it's also pretty kind of ugly I find my dad actually mentioned I could use something called PVC foam so which is what I used in this project here it's really really cheap it's about 20 US for an 8 feet by 4 feet um, sheet I went with the quarter inch thickness. I probably should have went with half inch just for more um, rigid rigidity, 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 rigidity. But I think it turned out pretty, pretty good. So I'm using um, PVC foam for the entire shell. I have some scrap plexiglass that I had lying around, which I use for the front door. And it basically opens like this. And I like find that's pretty nice. Now the printer does have a wireless camera on the inside here that I will use to monitor print from. I'm not going to have this 3D printer, um, even though it's an enclosure, I'm not going to have this in my room or in my lab. I'm going to have this in a storeroom we have that is well ventilated. Um, mainly because ABS can pre create very pungent odors. I have a fan on top of here that I can control from a button to vent any exhaust gas as well as when I'm using different materials like let's say PLA. 
it will allow for the environment to be run much cooler with ABS I'm not going to be using the fan I'll probably do a video about tips when printing ABS in my next video um, but yeah I also have lights inside right I have my 3D printer I have my power supply on the outside um, that's mainly because I don't want the power supply overheating inside of the 3D printer I have my filament also run outside just for safe space and that's about it so with that being said let's get into this build for my end the tree enclosure I needed to build a 20 inch by 20 inch by 23 inch box but you can make your own measurements to suit or fit any size 3D printer this size would allow my 3D printer to move freely inside of the box I picked up a sheet of quarter inch PVC foam board for about 23 US dollars at the hardware this board is waterproof and has excellent thermal insulation, heat resistance and strength. The sheet was 8 feet by 4 feet, which is way more than I need and I plan to use the extra for future projects. We also need about 12 feet of 1 inch metal angles. I'm using these lightweight galvanized angles used for ceilings that my dad had left over. And for the door, I'm using a piece of quarter inch plexi I had from a previous project. This needs to at least be 20 inches by 20 inches Take an account that the saw would take away one eighth of an inch when cutting. Luckily I had enough. The rest of the required items are a mix of drill bits, rivets, screws and bolts and hinges. I will list a link with all the items in the description below along with the electronics used in this project. I started off by cutting the four 20 by 23 inch sides and then the 20 by 20 inch piece for the back. This was done with a circular saw and some help from my uncle and dad. If you have a table saw this would be much easier. For the doors, we measured a 20 by 20 inch square on the plexi and then covered the lines with masking tape. We then redrew the lines on top of the tape. To cut, we used an angle grinder as the blade was much thinner. I'm really afraid of grinders so I let the professional take this one. Next we redrew a line down the middle to make the French doors using the same masking tape method. Now to assemble the box, we're going to need a couple of tools. A metal cutter, about 36 rivets but you should have extra in case some break. These are half inch long by 3 16th of an inch thick, an associated rivet gun, a 3 16th of an inch metal drill bit and a drill. I cut 4 metal angles using the cutter each 23 inches long for the 4 sides and 4 angles 20 inches long for the back. I used a small clamp to hold the metal angle on the inside of the PVC while I made 3 holes in the PVC. I put one in the middle and the other 2 holes 2 inches from the ends. Careful how you did this as the metal and drill bits can have sharp edges. Then using the riveting tool, I put the true rivets on the outside secure the metal to the PVC. I repeated this for all sides until I had a beautiful basket, I mean box, I mean 3D printer enclosure. This is actually really really heavy. I'm just joking, it's actually really really, really light. Super light. So. Um, essentially I have the box and then I have the two zip let's see. For the hinges, I measured 2 inches from the top and marked a clearance for the arm. I then filed away 1 16th of an inch. This would allow the plexi to be flushed with the front of the enclosure. I then placed back the hinge and marked the holes and used the same 3 16th of an inch metal bit to make holes in the PVC. I can't use rivets here as there is no metal on the inside for them to hold onto and they would damage the PVC. So instead I'm using 1 inch screw and nuts with a washer on the inside. This worked well and I repeated this for the other three hinges. Next, I flipped the box so the opening is to the top. This is to line up the plexi doors. I then mark the holes for the screws. Using the same drill bit as before, I slowly drill into the plexi to make the required holes. Again, here I'm using the same nuts and screws. This time with no washers. This is where I started to see problems with the plexi doors. They overlapped slightly when closing and needed the opening no other plexi was perfectly square. This wasn't a deal breaker as I could just trim the plexi and reinforce the frame later. For now, I have to close the doors at the same time or give one a little nudge to close properly. I added magnetic catches to help keep the doors closed there, so in the end it worked out great.
To finish off the look, I got this nice modern looking handle at the hardware. This was a personal choice and not necessary as it was a bit pricey. I originally planned to use a rope as the door handle, but I just found this was perfect when I saw it. And I must say, it looks great. Now how to get the filament inside. I centered the 3D printer in the enclosure to get an idea of where is the best place to enter the box from. I wanted the filament holder close to the edge where it was the strongest, so I decided the filament will enter from the side. The alignment placed the holder 8.5 inches from the back. I marked and drilled holes for the holder and used a 1 inch long screw here, nuts and washers. I took a center mark below the holder on the enclosure. I then measured an inch and a half from the top for my filament hole. I drilled a hole and then moved the bed downwards to give the filament a lot of movement. Because the enclosure is 20 inches wide, the filament has more than enough room to move freely to the 3D printer. The last thing to do here was to move the power supply outside. There's a simple XC60 connector that connects the 3D printer to the power supply that needs to come off. Using the supplied allen keys, I removed the 24 volt power supply. Save the screws as we're going to use them over. I templated the holes at the back and lined up the power supply 3 inches from the top. You can put this anywhere, but you may have to extend the cable. You will need spacers since the screw holes are shallow. I'm using 5 washers as to not damage the power supply. Once secured, I made a small hole to pass the XC60 connector through and fired up the 3D printer. Now we have a fully functioning 3D printer enclosure, but let's not stop here. So now the idea here is, so let's say we have the 3D printer. Now this is a 24 volt power supply, right? And there's a connector that goes straight to the 3D printer. I want to create a top here, 12 volts power supply, LEDs, a switch, and come back. Another switch for the fan, and come there. And that's about it, and I'll create a vent. Uh, voltage regulator here. Alright, there's a buck converter. Gotta have this fan, and then these LED strips, some high current wire for the power supply. The good news is, is the 3D printer uses the same XD6 day connectors. I started off by cutting a pair of 6 inch wire to extend the cable between the 3D printer and power supply. I then added male and female XC60 connectors with heat shrink to either end. Using a smaller pair of scrap wire, I made a top off and soldered it to the respective pins on the regulator. Using a small flat tip screwdriver and my multimeter, I set the output of the regulator to 12 volts needed for the LEDs and fan. I next wired up the switches, fans and LEDs. For LEDs, I cut the strip into 12 inch sections and ran wire joining each one to the other. I'm using a lot of heat shrink and headers to make the wire management look neater. I made sure and test everything before moving back to the enclosure. I used the compass to measure the radius of the fan blades and mark the center hole on top of the enclosure. I then used a box cutter to cut this out. Next, I marked and drilled associated screw holes. For the underside, I'm putting a 3D printed carbon filter holder to help clean the fumes coming out from the printer. This requires 2 inch long screws and nuts. Once that was done, I moved to make a hole for the buttons. I'm using a half inch wood bit for this and I just eyeball the holes making sure that they are free of the metal above and to the side. Lastly, I flipped the enclosure over and cleaned the ceiling with alcohol to make sure the LEDs will stick well. The LEDs will be 3 inches from each other and the center line. Once done, I flipped it back over and my enclosure was finished for now. The last thing I added was this cheap Wi-Fi camera I had that I would use to monitor prints from my phone. Now I plan to add an Arduino to monitor temperature and control the power and maybe add Octoprint, but that's for another video.
in the end, this thing looks good and works great. So everyone, I hope you liked and enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Um, if you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, leave it in the comment section below. And if you want to support these videos and more of this channel, don't forget to hit that, hit that subscribe button. It goes a long way in helping the channel as well as using my links in the description, which will be affiliated links. So I get a small amount of money for every time you buy something via my links in the description below. Um, that being said, stay safe, stay home, just do it yourself, just be yourself. That's all anybody could ask of you and see you in the next video.